Welcome to Model Steam Engines for Beginners. This is number two. Running in a steam engine with new or rebuilt parts. All mechanical devices need running or breaking in. In order to do this, the engine needs to be run at a controlled speed with plenty of lubrication. I cannot stress how important the quality of lubrication and the type of lubrication is. If you use the wrong type of oil, you will do more damage and do not use oil additives at this stage. Oil additives are very useful for lowering friction, but you don't want to do that. If you use oil additives, the engine will not run in properly. I normally use simple machine oil. A good quality machine oil such as lathe spindle oil is ideal. Don't use motor oil. Motor oil needs to be warm to function, and it's too thick to get to where you need it on the bearings. Even though the metal looks smooth, it isn't at all. Later on I'll show you a magnified view. Just to digress for a moment, this is a quick tip. When using slotted grub screws, always make sure that the slot is below the surface level. Because otherwise, if you put pressure on the slot with a screwdriver, one half of the slot normally breaks off. And then you end up with a broken grub screw, and it may be difficult to get it out. So make sure that the grub screw is definitely below surface level, which supports the sides of the slot. This is a Stuart Turner James Coombs engine and it's a very weird engine really with the cross head above the cylinder and a very complicated linkage from the eccentric to the valve chest. And one problem that I've had with this engine is that the eccentric is still a little tight and this is causing the valve links to kick a little bit and make a slight noise. But after a while this will disappear. As I mentioned earlier on, the purpose of running in is to smooth out the surface of the metal and if you look at this magnified section of a piece of metal, you'll see that it's awfully rough under a microscope. It looks like a lot of hills and valleys, and the real purpose of running in is to remove the hills. You still need the valleys in the metal, that will hold the lubricating oil. A good indicator of the status of the running in procedure is the colour of the lubricating oil that is exuding from most of the parts of the model. Here you see down this green part, nasty black oil. This is oil mixed with the metal residue from the bearing. And this is nothing to worry about on a new engine or an engine that's had some new parts fitted. But if this continues into the life of the engine, then something is wrong and needs investigating. If the oil's coming from the main bearings, it could be either that the caps are too tight, putting too much pressure on the bearing, or the bearing's got scored and is re-wearing itself back into play. Here you can see some black oil around the gland nut of this beam engine. This is because the gland has been recently fitted and it's quite tight. After a while the black oil disappeared. Looking at the exhaust pipe you will see black oil coming out of there too. This should happen for a while, particularly as the piston does a lot of work and wears itself into the bore. If your steam engine has a piston that's packed with graphited yarn, also known as soft packings, you will get some black residue like this until it all settles down. With this James Coombs model engine, after a couple of hours running, the exhaust residue became very clear. The oil that came out was the same colour as the oil that went in. But steam engines like this are better run at a scale type speed, more like you see here, nice and steady. Although sometimes it is good fun to open the regulator wide and watch the engine spin away. This has a governor, but the linkage is quite ineffective, it does not shut off the steam properly, or in this case compressed air. An engine of this type going like this, it nearly dances off the bench. Usually when I've finished rebuilding an engine, I run it at warp speed for a few seconds like this, and I don't recommend this, but it does show you that the engine's in good order. If anything was wrong, it would really show up at this speed. But don't do this for a prolonged period because the oil will be spun off by centrifugal force and you'll end up with dry bearings very quickly. A quick word about oil additives. A few years ago I was working at an oil refinery in Glasgow and I was speaking to a laboratory man and I was asking him which is the best oil additive and he said by far, without a doubt, rapeseed oil is the best additive. And I thought, what? Rapeseed oil? But then he went into great detail about it, talking about such things as long chain molecules and binding to this, that and the other. And I thought, mm, well, he must be right. So the next time I went up to the Model Railway Society, 
I was speaking to some of the men who used to work on the railways in the old days and I was telling them the story of the scientist at the oil refinery and they said, yeah, he's right. They said, years ago, we used to have something called the special stuff in the superintendent's office and if one of the engine's bearings was running hot, as was common with the inside cylinders of steam locomotives, they used to get some of this special stuff and add it to the oil and it was rapeseed oil. You live and learn. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.